All right, what's going on YouTube? This is Boxer Wave. I have a little bit of time to uh, do a couple videos here. I, I know I haven't been on the last few days, and I'm, I'm actually going to go and do a live video for Crawford and uh, Cavalaskis for the weigh-in. All right, and then, uh, I haven't actually done a prediction video for that fight, so I will be doing that and discussing all of that in that video. So I have some downtime. These videos will probably be put out after that live video that I'm going to do. But anyway, I want to have some downtime to talk about the heavyweight division. And, you know, I know everyone's been talking about it all week since Joshua won his belts back last weekend. OK, so I want to give my thoughts about the heavyweight division now. Now, who's the man at the heavyweight division? I'm going to talk about all of that in this video real quick. So Joshua won his belts back, and we're going into 2020 now. Wilder is scheduled to be fighting Fury in that rematch. Uh, Joshua is due to face one of his two mandatories. You have a mandatory uh, with Usyk for the WBO title, and you also have Pulev for the IBF. Now, Pulev been waiting a lot longer. He was supposed to be fighting Joshua a couple years back now. I believe when Joshua fought Tackham, that's when Pulev originally was supposed to fight Anthony Joshua for the IBF strap. But he pulled out of the fight due to an injury. And now he's looking to fight Joshua and get his opportunity. And then you have Usyk, who recently moved up to heavyweight, who was the undisputed champion at the cruiserweight division. He's looking to fight Joshua as well in 2020. All right, so we have all that going on for 2020, and then we have the rematch between Fury and Rob Wilder. Now, as the heavyweight division, as it stands today, is still completely up the grabs. Like, there's no way you can make a video about anyone being the man at heavyweight. No one ha is the man at heavyweight right now. Okay, no matter which way, which whatever way you slice it up. There's no way to determine who's the man, who's the king at the heavyweight division right now. We had a small hiccup with Anthony Joshua because of his loss to Andy Ruiz. All right. But he's avenged that loss and he's gotten all three of his belts back, including the IBO. All right. So he has three of the four major titles. Wilder still has his WBC title. And Fury is still undefeated, and he's still the lineal title. He's this guy that beat Klitschko first. All right? So nothing has changed between 2018 and 2019. Joshua and Wilder still not have fought each other yet. They haven't fought each other yet. And being that Fury and Wilder fought to a draw... We still don't know who is the man at the heavyweight division. Now, when it comes to resume, I think Joshua has the best resume. All right. He's already a two time heavyweight champion. Yes, he has the most belts. Yes, he makes the most money. Yes, I believe he's the A side and all that. But still, he hasn't fought Deontay Wilder. He has not fought Deontay Wilder. Wilder is the other champion who has been the champion the longest, who has the most title defenses, who is still undefeated. Okay? These are all strengths that Wilder has. And you have Tyson Fury, the guy that many believe is the most skillful the guy that beat the man first, he beat Klitschko first. Okay, he wasn't undisputed, but he had won those three titles first. Joshua won those titles after they were all separated. Because Fury retired temporarily. Right? So there's no way to really determine who's the man. They all got different things that are better than the next guy. Okay? But no one has really officially claimed, he, no one has that official claim of being the man and the king at, at, heavy, at heavyweight. Now, you can sit here and pick who you think is the man or who you think is the king at the heavyweight division based on your own opinion. But these three guys have to fight each other. You know, like Fury 
and Wilder won is voided because it was a draw. Again, it's voided. It's completely voided because it was a draw. It doesn't matter who you think won the fight. It went to the scorecards and they ruled it a draw. You got one guy winning a bunch of rounds and you got another guy knocking the other opponent out. So until we see that rematch, no matter what you feel, how you feel about it, there is no winner between those two. Okay? It doesn't matter about resume, money, A side, B side, all that stuff does not matter at this point because none of these three guys actually fought and won against each other. Two of them fought, they fought to a draw, then you have one guy that didn't fight the other two. That's all we have. Then you got a bunch of guys that are mandatories. You have Dillian White. He had his issue this year. He had a rough year, but he's going into 2020 clear. That situation is clear. He's back as a Mando. Usyk is back. I mean, Usyk is at heavyweight now as a Mando. Pulev is a Mando. Okay, so that's what we got. And if Wilder and Fury are set and scheduled and in contract to have a trilogy, an immediate trilogy, then that's 2020. That is set for the year. That's all we're getting that year. We won't know until after the rematch. Joshua has mandatory issues to deal with. So I do not expect the winner of Anthony Joshua, I mean, uh, I don't expect the winner of AJ, whether he fights Usyk, whether he fights Pulev, to unify against the winner of Fury and Wilder this year. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen this year. At the very most, we might see a Dillian White fight towards the end of 2020. That's if Wilder or Fury decides to fight three times this year, but I don't expect that to happen. And that's only if White is still the mandatory at that time. He might lose before that. Just like AJ. AJ might lose to Pulev and Usyk. You know? And let me talk a little bit about that because I was doing some thinking the other day. I was in here cleaning the house and I was doing, uh, I was listening to one of these guys on YouTube. I don't know who it was. I was listening to a random YouTube channel, just talk boxing. And uh, I was thinking about Pulev. Now, Pulev, I've been covering him on this channel for a long time, right? I've been covering him for a while. I remember when Pulev, I remember doing a, a breakdown between Kubrat, Pulev, and Klitschko years back. I remember covering the fight. I remember doing a, you know, a prediction video, a breakdown like I normally would do. And I remember picking Klitschko. I picked Klitschko to win that fight. There were a lot of people that disagreed with me in that, in that breakdown. There was a lot of people calling Pulev the new and improved Vladimir Klitschko at that time. Maybe not now because you got all these new fighters. You got Daniel Dubois. You got... You know, all these other guys that's come around. You had Ortiz. You had, um, you know, you got Hergovich. You got all these Joseph Parkers of the world, Dillian White. You got all these guys that came in. And once Poole left, lost to Klitschko, it kind of like he just vanished. Even though he's been still picking up good quality wins, everybody just tend to forget about you when you lose. That's just how boxing is today. Once you lose a fight... It's over. No one cares about you anymore. But people were calling Pulev Klitschko 2.0. I swear to you, at that time, people were calling him Klitschko 2.0. And for good reason. He fights. Before Hergovich started coming around, this is the person that people were comparing to Klitschko at that time. He was undefeated. You know, I know it doesn't mean anything that he beat uh, an undefeated Alexander Ustinov uh, because Ustinov haven't really done nothing. You know, Michael Hunter dispatched of him when he came, moved up to heavyweight. I understand that Ustinov doesn't mean anything now because he really hasn't really done anything. But I remember when Tyson Fury 
backed out of that fight when David Hay all right, got hurt, got injured again. It was, you know, for the second time or was, I don't know if it's the first or second time, but David Hay backed out and Fury was going to fight him as a replacement. And I remember Usinev showing up at the weigh-in in shape and probably in the best fit he's ever been in. And Tyson Fury didn't take the fight. Tyson Fury didn't take that fight because it was dangerous. And Ustinov was just as big as him. If not bigger, maybe not height-wise, but they were around the same height. He was a big dude. I remember when Pulev, I'm basically saying, I remember when Pulev was a top five heavyweight. Clearly. Even with the loss to Klitschko, he was still a top five heavyweight. He was there with Povetkin, Klitschko. There was Klitschko, there was Povetkin, there was Pulev. Uh, I don't know who else was there. You know, David Hay was still around. You had Fury. You know, this is, was, this is when AJ was still a prospect, you know, or just getting in the mix. This is when White was still get, just getting in the mix of things. This is when Parker was just getting in there. These were all prospect guys. Who left was a top dog. He was a top dog. But he's picked up some good wins. This guy has, uh, what did he do? He beat uh, Fury. He beat Huey Fury. Better than Parker did, in my opinion. He beat him better than Povetkin did, in my opinion. He's the only one that beat Fury and didn't make it look bad. He actually, like, soundly beat Fury. Now, I may not be saying much because Fury really hasn't pr proven anything, but it's still a good win. He beat Derek Jazor. Jazor is, is on a roll right now. But he soundly beat Derek Jazor. This guy has done, he's proven as a heavyweight. In this video, I don't want to make this video all about Pulev, but... Is Pulev a pushover compared to Usyk? Now, skill-wise, given an eye test, given, you know, what Usyk was able to do as a cruiserweight, oh, yeah, he accomplished more. I mean, he beat all of the top cruiserweight. He's definitely, he he did what he did his thing. You know, he, he cleared out the division. He won the World Boxing Super Series. He was undisputed, yes. But as a heavyweight, he hasn't really proven himself. Chaz Witherspoon. All right, a good intro. Good intro to heavyweight. Cool. All right, cool. I mean, I would have liked uh, Carlos Tackham a little bit better. But it wasn't a bad introduction to the heavyweight division. All right? But I need to see more. I'm not completely sold on Usyk as a heavyweight. Now, I do believe on his skill set. Absolutely. I believe in his skill set. I don't know. I'm not sure about his punch resistance at the division. I'm not sure about his power at the division. You know, I'm not sure about his size at the division. Those are the things I question. His skill set is definitely there. But it's not like he has the greatest defense in the world. When he hit, gets hit by a Joshua or a Wilder, or if he were to fight a Derek DeZora, how is he going to take the hit? That's what I want to know. Is he more dangerous than Pulev? Is he? Pulev is not like some bum. He's not a tune-up. <laughs> Pulev was always ranked higher than Andy Ruiz. Now, I know Andy won the first fight against Joshua. Cool, that's a much bigger than win than anything that Pulev has on his resume, without a doubt. But there's no point in Andy Ruiz's career, outside of the Joshua win, was he ranked as high as Pulev, ever. Now, I'm not going to sit here and gas him, but I'm saying Joshua... Doesn't have it easy coming up. These fights are not easy. He hasn't had any easy fights. Since 
what, his 16th, 15th, 16th professional fight, he's been fighting nothing but good fighters, dangerous fighters. He hasn't had it easy at all. And it doesn't start with Pulev if he chooses Pulev. It doesn't start with Usyk. These are both fights that he can possibly lose. Now, I know he won his belts back and everything, but are they, you know, I think to have Fury on his resume, you know, Wilder beats Fury, I think that is probably the best win you can have as a heavyweight at this point. I'm not going to argue that. I think Joshua overall has a better resume than both Fury and Wilder. But if, if Wilder or if Fury is to win that fight, that's the best win you can have on your resume at this point. Especially for Fury because Fury already beat Klitschko first. So if he is to beat Wilder, well, I would have to give him the nod when it comes to resumes. If Wilder is to beat Tyson Fury... I would probably say that's a much bigger accomplishment than anything that Joshua has done. So that is a big, that's a very important fight. But Joshua, as far as consistent, consistent fights, Joshua has fought the better fights consistently. He didn't fight any tomato cans in between those wins that he, he's had. And he has a lot less fights than Wilder. And he has less fights than Tyson Fury. I don't know what's going on out there, but we is a lot of noise out there. I'm sure you hear it. Um, but yeah. So I think you can't sleep on any of these matches. Uh, Joshua, what he's doing here. This is this this whole thing about Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for the noise, guys. This is what uh, living in New York City is like. Constant, all day. All right, so what I will say about Joshua, and I, I want to close this out. What I will say about Anthony Joshua is that when you hold three titles, there's a lot of responsibilities to, that comes with that, especially if you're trying to keep the titles and not get stripped. Okay, you have to constantly fight mandatories. You have no voluntaries. You have no fights in between where you could do whatever you want. Fury has been taking advantage of this lineal champ thing. He doesn't hold a title, but he owns what he has is the status of being the man at the heavyweight division. He beat the main man at the heavyweight division. But he's he doesn't have any mandatories. You know? So he can fight whoever he wants to fight. That's what Fury is. That's my issue with Fury. He can have these little uh, voluntary voluntary fights in between having one big fight. He'll have Klitschko fight a couple bums. He'll fight Wilder, come fight a couple guys that, you know, are not a real danger to him. Fights that he's going to win. I know Otto Wallen gave him a good fight, but Otto Wallen was never to be the guy to beat Tyson Fury. All right? He wasn't there to win against... Tyson Fury, let's be honest. This is not a danger, a real true danger to Tyson Fury. Joshua, every single fight is a dangerous fight. Even Ger Gerald Miller, to a certain point, to a certain degree, Gerald Miller was still a dangerous fight because he was undefeated and he's huge. He's huge, you know? He's a, he's a big guy. That throws a lot of punches. It was dangerous because what if Joshua gets tired and can't knock him out? There was a chance. There was some sort of danger there. Now, I didn't think he was as dangerous as Ruiz was when they announced that he was going to be the replacement, but still dangerous. So anyway, the heavyweight division is still up for grads to me. Um, I just need it to be, I need secured wins for me to pick. You know, I know the channels have made videos like this, stating who's who, who's the best, this, that, and the third. Um, some will pick Joshua because of his resume, because of the amount of money he makes. Some will pick Wilder because the fact that he had 10 title defenses, he's still undefeated. Some will pick Fury because Fury is still the lineal champ. And he's, in a lot of people's eyes, he's still the most skillful. I need to see wins. 
okay? No matter what, I'm not going to base it on eye tests, none of that stuff. Because I don't think any of these guys can beat everyone. I don't believe so. I don't believe any of them can beat everyone. Now, I have opinions. Like, I think, I think Fury... I think Fury has a great chance of beating Wilder. I think how I think Wilder has a great chance of beating Joshua. I think Joshua has a great chance of beating Tyson Fury. And I think that some of these other guys that are still hanging around, like Luis Ortiz or uh, or some of the new guys, you got you know you got uh, you got Daniel Dubois, you got Hergovich. You got Michael Hunter. You got Alexander Usyk. What if he could be all three? Like, we got to see it. We got to see it. I'm just going to sit back and wait. Um, I think at this point, it's starting to look at when it comes to Wilder and Joshua, it's starting to look like this whole thing was planned to me. This is just all these arguments that we've been doing over the last couple years. This is starting to really look like Mayweather Pacquiao. And at this time, at this point, it is the biggest fight in boxing. And it is a $100 million fight. At one point, I didn't think it was a $100 million fight. But at this point, it's definitely, it's certainly a $100 million fight. Especially after seeing what happened with Joshua and Ruiz. You know, especially after seeing the kind of numbers they pulled off, the subscribers they received, the money they made. Without a doubt, this fight between Joshua and Wilder is the biggest fight in boxing. So I think if they are still on the feet, I think it's a risk because there's a chance that Wilder may lose a fury. I think there's a chance that Joshua may lose to one of Usyk, if not Usyk, to Pulev. You never know. You never know. None of these fights are guaranteed. I'm just going to sit back and wait to see what happens. All right. So uh, that's my little heavyweight talk. Uh, I don't think there is a king yet. I don't think anyone's been crowned yet. I think they all done their thing in, in different ways, you know, uh, especially when it comes to the top three. Uh, I've said this before in one video before. I believe that I, be, I believe that Joshua, I, I believe that Fury has the skill set, the technique. You know, I think he has the best boxing ability. I think Wilder, obviously, is the power guy. He's the KO guy. He's not there to win rounds he's there to knock you out he's not there to go 12 rounds clearly all right there's only one guy that has lasted uh all 12 rounds with wilder and he barely he barely made it the other two that lasted got well the other one that lasted got knocked out in a rematch okay uh so you have fury who's the tech the technical the technically sound fighter you have Wilder, who was the knockout artist, and you have Joshua, who is the in-between. Not as technically sound as Fury, not as big as, of a puncher as Wilder, but he has a little bit of both. And then you have Usyk, who is the wild card. He's the guy that you just don't know because I think he has a skill set to neutralize all three of those three guys. But... His disadvantage is he's not a true heavyweight. He's a cruiser. He came in at, what, 213 against uh, Chaz. And I know that Wilder doesn't weigh that much. I know he weighed around that uh, against Fury. But Wilder is a heavyweight. You know, he could be bigger. But he wants to be, you know, he's put on pounds. You know, he can fluctuate. He can move up a little bit. But he wants to have that speed. You know, so I think uh, Usyk is a wild card, and then you have a whole bunch of other guys that are good. You have the Pulevs of the world, you have the Ortiz, all those guys on it. But those three, and then that wild card who is Usyk, you have all of those fighters, and that's my breakdown. I don't think anyone beats everyone. We just gotta wait and see. But I do believe that Joshua is consistently 
having it harder because he's constantly he's holding three belts and he's trying to hold on to them. I think he takes another loss at some point. Hopefully it's after he fights Wilder. And Wilder and Fury, one of them is going to lose. I don't think we're getting another draw. Okay, I think we're going to get a loss this time. When we think we're going to get a second draw. All right. So, all right. Uh, that's it. Uh, I got to do this weigh-in with uh, Crawford and Kavalaska. So, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.